evening everyone I hope you can see both of us that the angle is wide enough but this is Archie Hamilton from Archie Hamilton Racing an ex racing driver current yeah. slash current I'd racing say driver, ex slash current YouTuber and uh, the first I guess guest we could call it on these uncut interviews that I'm doing so basically the inspiration comes from Dead Mouse, you may know him, he's a DJ. He used to do these coffee run videos, which I was addicted to and always watched, where he would get other fellow DJs or just um, recognizable personalities, put them into, he had a 458, yeah, 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 and stuff one. like that, the black one. Yeah, yeah. And then he did it all, uh, did you see like with the whole rap, like the cat rap type thing? Anyway, yeah, it was yeah. very cool. And he would take them for rides and they would just chat, like a normal conversation, and you would just sort of be sat in it, and it was really entertaining. So I thought I'd do the same thing, these sort of unedited, uncut videos of chatting with uh, friends, YouTubers, people from other different worlds um, about what they do and just whack these videos up and see what you guys think. So effectively what's going to happen now, Archie, is as we are driving <laughs> in the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio, which is what we're yeah. currently in, uh, we're just going to have a little bit of a chat. Let's so, do it, let's uh, go. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm what's very crack? well, like thanks, Sam. It's an honor to be the first guest. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Um, tell us a bit about yourself. How old are you? Where are you from? What's your story? Okay, so I'm 26 years old and yeah. I originated from, well, originated, born in London. Your mother? Yeah, my yeah. mother. Um, basically, the, I raced for numerous years across the world, like yeah. sort of. Formula Renault building up to international GT championships, yeah. having lots of successes, and then going to Le Mans and racing at Le Mans after my twice, grand, yeah. twice. My grandfather won Le Mans, so that was my inspiration to get into racing. So was that why you started? So your because your granddad raced, but your dad didn't. didn't yeah. Race. So my grandfather won Le Mans in 1953. Oh, he won. A, he won it. Oh wow. And in a Jaguar C Type. Uh, with an average of over 100 miles an hour, which is the first ever oh. ever car to average over 100 miles an hour uh, over the course of a 24-hour race. Not only wow. that, it was the first car to win a race with disc brakes. We know every van or every truck, tr everything has disc brakes. Yeah, but, uh, back, but in, back, back then, the drum brake, like, drum yeah. brakes were the thing, and and this caused a massive advantage over the Ferrari, which was second, uh, which was yeah. with Sterling Moss. Oh second. yeah, so, so, it's, so it's Sterling Moss. Oh, wow. um, I believe that was Ferrari, or maybe Sterling Moss. And anyway, it was all a pretty uh, successful and famous win. Yeah. And um, so yeah, so I came from a racing background. My dad didn't race. That's what I was getting onto for blabbering. Uh, yeah. Because back then, racing was so dangerous. Racing was dangerous in yeah, terms of like, people. Crazy. It was a normal thing to go to a racing event and lose one of your friends and not come back with one of your friends. So my dad never got the chance. Uh, he said he would have been really good, but that's <laughs> as far as that one goes. Um, and then, and then when I met you, so I met Seb um, a year ago, basically, pretty much yeah, a year to the month. Just over a year. And I, some people may or may not remember, but I was assigned by somebody to be your race instructor to get all of your so race licenses. we had a brand deal video. Um, and the brand we were working with had picked you to be our yeah. instructor for what we were doing during that time. And it was so funny because they were like, so you're going to be coaching a load of YouTubers. I went, what? Like, yeah, what? Like, what the what's YouTube? a YouTuber? What does yeah. a YouTuber do? Like, yeah. I wasn't educated. I didn't I have remember. a YouTube. I didn't have a yeah, YouTube no. app on my phone. I just went, if I wanted to look on something on YouTube, I thought that, I didn't realize this world was evolving. Yeah, yeah. And then we met. Um, we got on We got on really well back. straight away. Started hanging out loads in London, and then that all happened. And then you came um, to my house, and we did a video there. Yeah. And then, and then you were basically like, well, we seem to be hanging out a lot. Why do you not start a channel? Well, because I remember, because you were racing, but the problem with racing is the money, isn't it? So racing in any series, if you don't have loads of money yourself, you need to get sponsors. Yeah. And you had just had a situation where you'd been racing, but you'd stopped racing more just because of the lack of interest and different things. So you'd lost a few sponsors. So you weren't racing as much. Yeah. And when we started getting close, I was like, well, look, if you're not racing, mate, like you have access to really cool cars and yeah. stuff. Why don't you give this whole YouTube thing a go? And I was like nervous. I was like, nah, I don't think I can do it. Like, um, yeah. you know, I, I'm not good on camera and you'll see from my early videos. I was literally like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember wooded. how nervous. I was really wooded, good. like, and, but that's like, a, I think that's a normal thing, that whole camera being in front of your face. Yeah. And yeah, like racing, a lot of people ask me this question, why do I not race anymore? When I was racing, 
some years I'd have to raise the best part of quarter of a million upwards to go racing for one yeah. year. Yeah. That's without your damage. That's crazy. So you, so you and damage is on you, right? Damage yeah. is on the driver. Yeah. So it's down to your sponsor. And damage my... is if you crash the car, the reparations are on the driver. So you have an excess, an, but which is usually like twenty grand. Twenty grand. Le Mans, Le Mans is twenty grand excess that you're playing with. So you're playing That's with crazy. fire. Yeah. Um, and I'm not from. A lot of people think I'm from a wealthy background. I'm not from a background of family. Oh, we're getting off of this one. Oh, we're getting off. Yeah. Uh, not quite nine miles. Uh, I'm not from a family which has that sort of money to go and spend that amount of money on racing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you were raised crazy. in a good background. Yeah, I, good I am from a very good background. I was privileged enough to have a very good education yeah. and raised through. But, but the I mean, racing side is something that my family can't fund. Exactly. Um, so, and I wouldn't want them to either. And and it got to a point where I was, I'd done Le Mans, I'd done all, all the championships um, sort of around the world and achieved a lot. But the next step for me was to have a full season in the World Endurance Championship, the, which includes Le Mans, goes all around That's the world, WBC, and LMP2, WBC. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd done um, the second half of the season in 2015. And oh, to, really? Okay. Uh, yeah, and to do the last half would be to do the full season in 2016. I think it's almost sense. 2016 would have cost. Well, I, I'm, I'm feeling confused by my years. Anyway, yeah. Um, and the, the full the season would, would have, have been 750,000 pounds for the year. So I, so I was in a position. North or south, by the way. Uh, we are going north. Yeah. So I was in a position where I was like, I can't, I, I can't see this racing thing unless a billionaire comes out of the woodwork. No, yeah, that yeah. is, because you, you explain it like this: race horn. Race horse owners don't ride race horses. Yeah. It's more of a hobby for these guys to sponsor a young kid and get them yeah. to race. But people go, well, what does a sponsor get in return? Well, a sponsor will probably get more in return for one of our videos. Yeah. But yeah. for the reach. Yeah. But it's more the it's access to the passion. pits and yeah. it's their passion and, and yeah. they can be part of a team. Which and is they a, know, okay, I'm funding this. Yeah, this it's is very my thing. So Jackie Chan this year has two cars at Le Mans. The car won Le Mans in its class. Yeah. Pretty cool. Do you know what yeah. I mean? He yeah. is a typical guy that loves cars, never got a chance to do it himself, and then, and then that's what happened. But so racing is... I, I, I'm never ruling out that I'm never going to go racing again, but after doing most of the championships possible and dabbling in it, obviously not sometimes not full seasons, I, yeah. I feel that it would... For me, being very busy with the whole YouTube side, it would just need to take something with... It would need someone with a lot of money to come along and say... Hey, yeah, look, just be like, look, I'll, I'll fund it, do, but yeah. you... But the problem is, we we are busy on a weekly basis, so it's like, you need to go testing, that means less videos in a week, so the yeah. hit you would take is quite... So, I it's a hard one to juggle. But I think yeah. my dream scenario would be to have more on-track content on my channel yeah. so I can evolve it around YouTube but I think well, racing... because that's your that's your original niche which when yeah. we started talking about you doing videos I was like look you're a racer there aren't really any racing driver YouTubers out there right yeah, now yeah yeah exactly and so that's what you started doing you, you've you moved into the more mainstream stuff now but yeah. you still have, like things like your GT3 video yeah. uh, and stuff like that like yeah. all of that is back to the racing back to the and I'm going to try and evolve so it more and more, and more in more, yeah, yeah people ask for that and say but um, yeah, yeah I, I just think at the moment racing will take a back step, and I'm I'm loving what I'm doing. And then obviously the YouTube stuff, it's I only quick stopped for you. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's, it's grown pretty quick. Obviously Seb gave me my first ever shout out, so this is all thanks to him that I'm even in this no, position no, no, I mean, you to put bring in your hard work. And all that but stuff. but but you were the one, the original person, which obviously I'll always be forever thankful for. But it's one of the industry. I love what I do, yeah. and it, every day like people say like oh these youtubers have such an amazing life we are privileged to do what we do don't get me wrong yeah. and i'm never gonna um disagree with that but the hours we put in i think people don't see that um, yeah, and that's the main thing i mean uh, we were talking about it i was talking about it with um alejandro salamondrin yeah and you know he's like every, and it's true everyone sees the best 10 minutes of your day yeah and it looks like wow all you've done is just had a ball but the amount of organization usually which goes into organizing those 10 minutes yeah it's crazy because you organize every video in advance you then edit it there's just there's a lot more work than people realize and especially for someone like you youtube is basically what you're doing now but when you're also trying to kind of work on another career like racing career 
it's uh, it's pretty intense. And, and I mean, yeah, it, it is it is pretty intense. So I think for now, if you know, obviously it may be a chance where you can make more on track content as well. Yeah, so maybe we yeah. can all get together and do some fun stuff, which involves maybe taking our cars around a track or something, something where like we can that, make yeah. it um, right. a little bit uh, different. But yeah, I'm yeah. enjoying what I'm doing, and, and I mean, it, it's fun. Like all, we're all good friends, you know. Like That's we all get to do. Is, we all like we. Me, you, James, Paul, Sam, blah, blah, we're all good mates, we're all get on, yeah. and we get to make fun videos together, and that's where you It's the most amazing thing, I mean, and because also we were kind of, you know, in the right place at the right time, making videos. Well, it was I mean, also you came you. along. Yeah, you came along later, but I mean, for us, it was, yeah, we were in the right place at the right time, making the right kind of videos, and then it all sort of grew from there, and now that we have this camaraderie that people love to see, is so lucky, because it's not at all fake like we are just good mates and we spend so much time together yeah i mean, I mean because you've been at my house for about a month yeah exactly. <laughs> I basically no, and then uh, but but it's we're we're all good mates we all just when the camera people are probably like oh are these guys good mates off camera you can turn the cameras off and we'll be like just go for nando's yeah. Or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, AO's here as well by the way you're one who's in the back yeah who films and edits the videos um, um but yeah but then okay another thing i want to talk about because this yeah. video is going to come out after you've announced your ra okay so walk us through the process because i was there but it was all so quick even for me yeah of we were at goodwood you loved the corvette we all loved the corvette I did that experience video on the Corvette, everything was all good and stuff. And then, next thing I know, you're, you, you bought an R8 and sold the Corvette, so what happened there? So, we obviously were at Goodwood, we met a lot of you guys down at Goodwood, and we had yeah. lots of meets and greets, and yeah. it was the first time that anyone really got a chance to get up close and personal with that car. Yeah, because no one really had seen it. Had you had it for what, two months? Three months? Three months, but I'd never really been, I'd been away quite a lot, I hadn't been to many yeah. car meets, a lot of the time was getting <laughs> different things on it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. And I didn't plan on selling it. And then when I got back, I actually drove back from Goodwood when we were driving back. And I thought, is this the right car? Yeah. And I thought, there's many things that are going through my head. And we made that video going, is this the right car? Is this the right car? Do I and what can I do it? to modify yeah. it? And I always got, um, I was dealing with the Corvette dealership. Whatever I said, no, 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 no. You can't do an exhaust. You can't do this. You can't do that. They weren't and really giving you any. Weren't giving way. me anything to to work with. So I'm yeah. like, well, what do I, what do I do? Where do I go? And I was like, do I just do it anyway, but lose the warranty? And then I'm like, well, how? Well, then well, I'm not gonna be able to sell the car in the yeah. future. Yeah. So I was, I was all, there was already a small doubt in my head whether I had bought the right car. If it was either gonna get wrapped, chrome blue. Which my was, chrome blue, I think exhaust was, body kit. Exactly. Do the whole we, I was going to go to town on it. Yeah. But two days later, I got a phone call. Oh, we still going straight yet? I got a phone call from somebody through a friend of a friend, and they said, oh, "Would you sell the Corvette?" And I said, "Well, I'll, I'll listen to offers and blah blah blah. I'm not going to go into what they, the person offered or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it was an offer I couldn't turn down. Yeah. It allowed me to no, basically go to I, something I, else. I know the offer. And yeah. It was, it, it was, was a good offer. Like we can't, offer. we can't deny this. This is a very good it offer. It was more than more than you paid for the car. Yeah, so, and I drove the car for three months. Yeah. Um, so it was an offer more than I paid for it, and I drove the car for three months, and I got what I wanted out of the car. And then I was like, where do I go next? Yeah. And I was looking back through a lot of videos, and when I was looking for my car, and a lot of people like R8 B10 Plus, B10 Plus, but I didn't properly know so much about them and I've studied them all the time online. And what and were like, the, did you have other options or was it always already? It was that, it's a, we like, well me personally, because I don't have loads of cash, these, yeah. these cars are finance guys by the way, they're yeah. not like, yeah, so, yeah. Finance, yeah. so I finance it, so you, with the finance you have a deposit which comes from the Corvette which then goes into the next one, so it was basically like where, where do I go, this bracket of a hundred grand let's say, what do you buy? Like, yeah. R8 V10 Plus, which let's it's say a now price they're rate. between 110 and 150, and you're, it's basically a hurricane. Yeah. And then you've got things like F Type SVR, the second hand one, it's going to drop like a stone probably. Yeah. yeah. 540C is too much. Hurricane is too much. Too much, and uh, it's been done. Before. Corvette, I've done it. Corvette, what? you've done it. Mustang is a, there's, you know, you can't get a Jeep with the G350, is it? GT350, yeah, but they're a lot cheaper, but yeah, you yeah. can. You could get them, but it would feel like a bit of a downgrade. It feel like a bit of a downgrade. Um, 380 and you, you can all drive mine whenever you want anyways, so. Yeah, exactly, you've, done the, you've got the Lotus kind of thing, you've done that. So I was like, 
where do I go? And then I was like, and then I spoke to Redline Specialist Cars who are based up in Manchester. And I was like, look, I see you've got this blue R8 and it's got silver wheels. Yeah. Will you do a good price on it? And will you, will, like, would you like to work together with it? And then we we agreed a deal. And I was like, all right. The day the Corvette went drove out, I phoned him up. I was like, yeah, cool. Done. And then I was like, done. And then, it was crazy, Albert, because you called me and you were like, yeah, I, I bought an R8. I was like, even what? I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, oh, shh. Yeah, well, what are you and, doing? Yeah, what am I doing? But I just thought that if I get into something straight away, my channel can keep progressing. And there's yeah. no, like, time when people are just like, oh, we sold the Corvette. And then, yeah. Um, so that was that, really. And then, yeah. And then now here we are. <laughs> here we are. And then I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't know where um, I will go from here. But I think for the time being... You don't need, yeah, you can I think this how, car how I saw this car was I've had a good offer from the Corvette. Yeah. I'm well aware an Audi R8 is going to depreciate. Yeah. But what, what the offer I had, I'm hoping that that will minimize the damage. Yeah. That's yeah, what I'm there you go. Yeah. yeah. So That's hopefully why. you should Otherwise, come out I don't think I'd, yeah. Bad, yeah. I'll, hopefully, and I'll And it's a really good spec for resale with the color. It's a, it's a blue, it was a blue color, which was a color which I, ha I had. It's popular in general, so. Yeah, I think I, well, you don't really see much in that color. Um, yeah. And I think I, I'm all about doing something a little bit different. Yeah. So I was like, an R8 in a bit of blue, black wheels. The yeah. wheels were originally silver. Yeah, so they painted, yeah. red line painted yeah. the wheels for you. And, and, then, then, and then I was like, boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Done. I'm going to get bankrupt very soon. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. Like, we drive decent cars, right? But we end up at McDonald's pretty much. Yeah, six, we're nine, just like, uh, Seb, I don't know how I'm going to fuel at this. Yeah, 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 how am I going to? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because we have bought... a long drive home. But yeah. No, it's super exciting. And yeah. then, are you, so are you keeping the A45? Because the A45 is a separate thing. I think the the reason a lot of pe uh, people a lot of people ask this at the time were, will you keep the A45? You just bought a Corvette. I tried to daily that Corvette. And the more I drove it, the more I've realized this is not a daily. Yeah. The it's gearbox. Well, the gearbox. I yeah. struggled with the gearbox so much with that yeah. car. And sitting on the left, for me, I thought, when I drove out of the dealership, I was like, yeah, it's all right. And then daily basis, while, it stressed yeah. me out. Like, I would just, you'd just be driving down. I live like, right in the country. And you've got yeah. to, you've got to, you know, you just got to position the car. Like, yeah. you feel you're yeah. driving in the hedge all the time. Yeah. Uh, a few different things. But obviously, the guy who owns the car now is passionate about American cars and is well aware that these are the only cars that they're only ever going to do left-hand drive. Yeah. Do I see Corvettes going a step further? I think they need a few years. They need a few years. There's that other one that you, you posted a render of, which is this is the mid-engine C8 or I think it's C8. Like that, yeah. yeah. If they did like a right-hand right -hand drive version of that for the UK market, that's what could bring them into the more mainstream sort of. I, th of, I think so. I mean, in, the in, this is in Europe. If you're watching this on the states, we know it's super mainstream. <laughs> You've over got there. one down the road. Yeah, 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 exactly. They're sort of all over over there. But here, they're so rare. I mean, it's the equivalent of like most Lotuses. Uh, you can't get in America. I don't know if you knew. Are, like, they, are, they, are, they, are there none, or is it just rare? Well, the new Exige, for example, I think that basically you can't get them in America. You can get really? the Avora, but you can't get the Exige. Uh -huh. So it's super rare. Similar situation to Corvettes here. You don't really see them. Very and much. is it the same situation? Is that there are like not many at all? No, no. Like in the whole of America, you you really just won't have a lot at all. Okay. Um, so, but Avoras, yeah, Avoras are popular over there. Yeah. But uh, Exiges are pretty pretty true. And I mean. Do you, where do you see yourself going from, a question back to you. You have the yeah, Lotus. This is, this is an Archie. Yeah, this Archie, is an Archie. Let's right. change this. Change yeah. the title. Yeah. Um, okay. we let, where do you see, so you've had the Elise, you've gone to an Exige 380, which is obviously a massive step up oh, from there, step up, which yeah. is cool. Where do you see, do you see yourself continuing going well, on the Lotus thing or do you think there's something else that could interest you? I love Lotus. Yeah. Uh, my grandfather always loved Lotus. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Always really, really liked Lotuses. And so that was one of the things that really made me want to get one. And then, you know, I, I was really close to my grandfather, but we had that bond over cars. So they always had a special place for me. Anyway, so I've kind of done Lotus. I love the, the 380. Like, I genuinely really, really like that I remember that car. when we drove it the first time around oh. the track, I was like, what? It's so fast and it's yeah. so brutal. The only thing, I mean, because I, I basically daily that car, 
it is so hardcore. And as much as I'm like, yeah, I like driving hardcore cars daily and stuff, I yeah. am sort of getting to the point where I'm like, this is... And when I drive cars like this, I'm like, oh my God, I have a working stereo, I have Bluetooth, <laughs> I have a heated seat, like all this stuff is... I, I might be just getting old. But anyway, so... so <laughs> 21. Yeah, so the, the Exige, I love it. I'll either keep it and do what you're gonna do with the Corvette and wrap it, change the wheels, put an exhaust on it and stuff. Did you have done exhaust on it yet? I haven't done it's stock it's like yeah. apart from window tints and stuff, but that doesn't really count. No. It's basically stock. So I'll either do that and just completely give it a whole new life and keep running with that. Or sell the car. Um, and hopefully sell well. And then my dream absolute dream and, and you know this since it's come out like a life goal of mine has been to have a 458 I, I am just in love with that car and whether it's in six months or in 25 years I will one day own a 458 so the dream would be to sell out all the exige and get a 458 however I don't think that's realistic because it's so expensive so what I would maybe have to do is sell the exige go down to potentially something like a C63 a GT350 something like that for a few months or a year or something, save up yeah. and then get the, I think that would be the more responsible way of doing it because I don't want to, I don't want to bankrupt myself by buying this car. Like you. Like, like <laughs> you, yeah. I'm going to be as ballsy as you are. Um, no. And so I want to be able to, and you know, I, I, I don't want to resent the car. I'm not saying you will, right? No. Because I, I know you'll be fine. And, and yeah, even yeah. though it is a lot of money, like we joke about it, but you'll be okay. <laughs> but if I bought a 458 now, I would end up resenting the car because that would be the reason why I wouldn't be able to have fun with my friends you, or go on trips. Do you need because to have spare everything. cash? Yeah. Otherwise, how are you going to... You resent the car. You end up being like, this car is the reason why I'm out of money and you never yes. want to drive it because you're yeah. so scared of value. Whereas if you buy a car, which, you know, you can buy and on the side still the be Corvette doing actually. okay. I thought that was You Corvette. resented it yeah. because of that. At yeah, the end. There you go. There you go. Because you think, I don't want to drive it. Um, That's a funny thing. I did, genuinely did think that. I, was, I got back from Goodwood and I was just like... Yeah. I didn't really know. I'll leave it in the garage and you're almost excited. You're like, oh, yeah, you can stay in there for three weeks now. Yeah, because which is really bad. But I have finance going every month. I'm just like... Well, yeah. Uh, I, what am I doing? I, I kind of just, like... Sometimes you want to change and just fell out of love a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit well, like, you, you know, do. that just happens. I think I just, I, I think, can't stop I, it. But, but a lot of people say, well, that's just ridiculous because you're, it's, I would cut my left arm off to have that car. The problem is with us, we are surrounded by cars. We're very lucky. Well, yeah. And you're only going to, all you're going to do is going to be like, well, the Corvette gearbox is worse than the Julia Quadrifoglio. Yeah. And you're like, oh. Damn it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it generally is. Yeah, yeah, So, a lot of, there are quite a lot of there things. There were a few points, and I think I saw it with you. You just completely fell out of love with that car. I know. And finances could be one reason, just the car in general. I was really worried things. as well with when I got back from Goodwood was, uh, the, what is this car going to be worth in three years' time? Yeah, well, that was the thing with the Corvette. It could have depreciated. What, it where, where, did, I mean, it, because mine's one of a thousand, there's potential that could hold its value and they might stop running C7s and that yeah. might have met. but yeah. there's also potential that hey, car can be worth like 50 fat. grand in yeah. like three easily yeah so you know you did I think you did very well you bought and sold at the right time and uh, and that's what you need to try and do. We've been talking for 23 minutes. Yeah, I was about to say, we should potentially It has been cool, and we could talk for hours. Yeah, because we could do more of these. Yeah, we could. We could, in fact, we could even film a, a second episode. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I hope people will like this, because uncut, just literally oh, hearing this is about my like boring the most life. Honest, the most honest type of video, and that's what I wanted to do, and that's what I loved at Deadmau5's videos when he did them. So, uh, this is 100%. Dead Mouse, who I doubt will ever watch this, but... They're the most genuine, aren't they? Yeah, it was his idea, all the credits go to him, uh, we just thought it was cool and we would sort of nick that idea. Yeah, just like, oh, cool idea, yeah. but um, my channel I'm going to put Yeah, up. yeah, exactly, <laughs> so it's not a coffee run, we're just cruising along in this Alpha, but yeah. It's an Evian run. It's an Evian run. <laughs> that wasn't a product placement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for being in this first one. Um, I want also you guys to comment down below if you want to see videos, I'll try and uh, we've got into getting some of the other YouTube guys to do to do some. You of should these. definitely do more because I think I personally would be sat at home and I'd be yeah, there. You could watch it. You could just watch it along. Yeah. So this uh, is how we come up yeah. with video ideas and stuff as well. We just were like, oh yeah, that could be cool. 
And, and like tomorrow we're just like, yeah, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, yeah, we are yeah. and that. We'll and sit in the car like this and chat about what we're gonna do. This is it, they see, and you've just come along for the ride. And that Anyways, truck is very big. Anyway. Also, Archie's channel, description, all over, go give him a follow. He does some fantastic videos, and if you're into racing or some. anything, uh, well, the, does fantastic videos. Uh, no, 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 I was saying some, as in, like, I was agreeing with you. <laughs> no, but you, you, you've got a very cool car now as well. Yeah, got we'll some see. exciting content coming with that. Uh, and we'll just see. cool stuff is going on really in your life. So go give Archie a follow also on social media and all the other places. But yeah, anyways, thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you again for another one of these or another video very, very soon. Cheers. Bye bye. Hey, yo. Quick captioning, sound name, no more. No Julia.